this is all about what I think of scouting. So this is the knowledge that I've kind of accumulated over the past whatever years. Um, so it can be done differently. You guys can find your own ways of doing it. This is purely for me to talk about how I like to do it. Um, probably the best thing for me is being able to scout in different contexts. So we spoke about it up there. It's gonna be based on your age, your gender, what level you're playing at, uh, point of season, do you have injuries? Are you winning? Are you losing? Are you trying to win? Are you trying to develop? There's so many things that can go into your thought process um, that it all applies to everyone. Um, so let's start with some open-ended questions. If you don't realize I like cold calling people because I read it in a book, it's good to do. Um, so at a rep school level, what do you think are some things that we should be doing as preparation for our players? Don't want to say scout at this point, but preparation for our players purely thinking about the other team right now um, that we could be doing at a rep and school level. So some of you mentioned it before. Like basic concepts they run. Yeah, I think even more basic than that. Yep, perfect, top scorers. So we're right hand, left hand, but let's go top scorer. So we can find that on game day, for example. So scoring. Now on game day, it splits into threes and twos, right? So maybe if you're coaching at under 12s and 14s level, it's not super relevant. But let's say you do go in blind. You haven't actually seen this team play. You can go on game day and say, well, hey. Hey, hey. What's up? Nice tracksuit. Oh, It's because they won the other day, huh? Yeah, there you go. You fired up. Um, so scoring. So when you go on the game day thing, if it's uh, a glaring number, this kid, like in the league, let's say maybe teams make five threes a game, but this kid on his own has made X amount, you can then adjust your scout. All right, guys, when you see this kid, game day has his number, we're gonna make sure we long close out on him. So whatever you do, we're not gonna let him shoot threes. Perfect, now you've got a scout on that player. So scoring, threes and twos, what else? Fouling. Pardon? Fouling. Fouling, yeah, we can find that in game day. Why would that be important for a scout? Yep, perfect, I like it. But that's probably going back to what then you do as a, as a team. So I'm thinking just for them right now. So it's a really good point. Um, Anything else? Maybe shortest to tallest. Shortest to tallest, yep. So height and maybe positions go into that. So then if you do want to match up like for like, you have that data available to you. Okay, what else? At like a rep and school level. I think you briefly touched on it. Concepts of players. Yeah, stuff they like to run, maybe. Um, now the, it's, it's gonna change. Do they run heavy pick and roll? Do they run a lot of cutting? Do they run Florida? Do they run dribble drive? Whatever it is, you don't have to explain the whole offense to these guys, boys, girls, rep school level, but you give them an idea, right? What it feels like, what it looks like, how we're gonna guard it, and we go from there. So I like it. So when you come into a practice or if you meet, you're lucky enough to meet with your rep teams or school teams, and I think this is super, super basic and super understandable. The concepts would be the hardest thing, and that's on us as coaches, how uh, bite-sized can we make those concepts. So if we go crazy with it, they run this on this action, if this happens, they do this. You don't need to know every single thing that happens in the offense. But if you can deliver it to the athletes in a bite-sized chunk, we're in a good spot. Okay. The last bit when we talk about rep and school level, how do you think we should deliver some of this content? I'm thinking one way, uh, that's probably the easiest. Pre-game on a whiteboard. Yeah, pre-game on a whiteboard. How do you think they'll go with, like five minutes later they have to execute? I reckon it's, pre it's pretty hard to do, like it would be hard to do. Yeah. Kids need to do it. Okay, physically do it. When would they do it? Training. Practice. Okay, cool. So how would you do it? So I didn't. That wasn't. Uh, no, I don't know why I call it practice. Uh, practice. Yeah. Uh, repetition. Yeah. yeah. So walkthroughs. Walkthroughs. Has anybody done walkthroughs before with uh, this kind of context? Demos. Yeah. yeah demos. Cool. Um, anything else? Like fibs on shooters. Like yeah. Yeah. That's getting that's getting super high level because I know like NBL teams that can't do that but I like it. We'll get back to that. I have a cool idea that we should talk about. Well, I mean, if you're fortunate enough to have film. Yep, film, cool. I like film. 
But let's say you don't, like you just have that. Are we all agreeing on walkthroughs? Okay, perfect. Who's done a walkthrough before with their teams? Hands up. Perfect. What was an easy part about the walkthrough? Yep. Did you do it five on O or five on five? Five on O to show them what mm -hmm. it was and then I did it. Live or you just walk through it again with defense? Walk it through and then live. All right, cool. I like it. I like where, you, like, like where your head's at. What's another thing you could do? So let's say context. Uh, we're at, what's the country tournament called over the Melbourne long weekend? John Martin. John Martin, right? So you don't have time to scout. You're playing games every hour. How would you do a walk through in that context? Under 14s. What could you do? Outside, you do it, maybe they have alternate uh, jersey and you just literally walk around in the car park, okay? There's a story about an NBA team that got snowed in at a hotel. They couldn't go do walkthroughs, so they did in the hotel lobby. So if an NBA team can do it in the most obscure places, you guys can too. So don't be limited by, I can't do it at practice, that is the best time for walkthroughs or at meetings or whatever it else. Um, you will always have time for walkthroughs. I think at a basic level, that's really, really good, okay? Any questions at this point? Okay, I'll go through some of my stuff from this context and just want to talk about this. So when you're developing a game plan, it's always going to be split. I'm trying to think of what the other one could be. If anyone could help me out, that'd be great. But stuff you're worrying about for your team and stuff you're worrying about for the other team. Okay, I'm not talking about you guys today because this is your thing. I'm not telling you how to do it. But with the scout, the way I like to think about it and the way I like to get my staffs to think about it, you split it into players and concepts or personnel and sets or uh, tendencies and plays. Whatever you want to call it, it's always going to be split into those two ways. So what are some things covered in players? Someone said it before. Right hand, left hand. Yep. What else? Shoot a drive up. Perfect. You guys could write a scout for me. It'd be great. Last one. Big small. Maybe. But in like most context, everyone does everything. So I think the big small thing goes away. But I like it, I like where your head's at. What's another thing? Who's their shit player? Alright, shoot a driver, yep. <laughs> anything special, anything outstanding? Yeah, anything special and outstanding. So that would be what? What's an example of outstanding or not outstanding? Yep, athlete. What else? Maybe, but we just said that size ended up not mattering. Don't worry about, don't worry about size right now. Maybe skill level, but I would, you could still categorize that into this. If they're really good off the pick and roll. Yeah, if they're good off an action. Rebounders was a big one. What's the, probably the last one? Best and you, defenders. best or? Best defenders. On the opposite, worst yeah, defenders. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or worst defenders. So you're probably not going to be like, all right, in the scout, we're going to go with their best defender. Doesn't make sense, okay? Um, you're going to identify maybe some of their less weakest. weakest defenders and go from there. Okay, good. We're building out the player stuff. What about concepts? I think about it a certain way, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Who haven't I asked? Right here. What's your name, sorry? Jacob. Jacob, what's up? Uh, style of play. What? So, yeah, yeah. So, that, that overrides the concepts. What concepts within that? Just pick one. Even simpler than that. Go back to the middle pick and roll. What's, more, what's just that in a, in, a, in a nutshell? You know the answer. Take away the middle. Say, say middle pick and roll, but take away the middle. Pick and roll. Perfect. <laughs> There we go, and it covers all areas of pick and roll. So you want to talk about pick and roll? You go from there. What else? Baseline, uh, maybe. Sideline, baseline. Eh. Maybe. I'm thinking concept. So concepts can go into sideline out of bounds. Concepts can go in baseline out of bounds. Cutting. Cutting. And who got that last one? Off ball screens. Off ball screens. Perfect. Defensive concepts too, like the rest of the zone whole game. Yep, true. Let's do that. But for right now, I'm thinking about offense. So I should have given that context. So for me, when we're going into a scout, we're thinking about this. How do we guard pick and roll? How do we guard cutting? How do we guard off ball screens? Now, for some teams, they're going to have a rule for each. For a team like 
The Sydney Kings currently, if you watch them play, they switch everything. They switch pick and roll. They switch cutting. They switch off ball screens. They switch base and out of bounds. So that's one team. Tim Hill, when you see him coach, you'll hear him yelling Texas, right? It's his great um, zone man offense, but they don't have a scout for concepts because they do the same thing with every action. But not all of us have that privilege. So we might have to have a scheme for pick and roll, a scheme for cutting and go that way. So when I'm explaining these scouts, this is just to give you some context is what we think about. Okay. Firstly, if this is all a bit crazy, let me know. And stop me at any point if you have questions. Okay, so I coached at a school team, um, the Great Knox Knights. We would prepare PDF scouts for these guys uh, every week for every game. So this data that you're seeing here, we would grab from Huddle. So some of you have dealt with Huddle. I'll show you some alternatives that we can use to get the same data for free. You don't have to pay for the data um, and go from there. So for us, understanding the concept, seconds basketball players are not as skilled as the first kids or state kids or rep kids. You really have to dumb it down, make it uh, bite size. So you give them the starters, which you spoke about before. We had this data already. We're not going in blind. Some things that we identified were important with the shooting, the tendencies we spoke about, you spoke about defense, we put a lot of that in there. Um, the team we're playing currently is a notoriously, um, what's a nice way of saying it? They love running zones, so it was a big part of our scout, that's why it's in there. Um, and then this bottom bit, the shot chart, was to give our guys an idea of what they like to do. So in seconds basketball, if you're shooting above 30%, you're probably going to win every game. So. This is a pretty, um, for a lot of you guys, it's like, oh, that's disgusting. Well, that's seconds basketball. Um, so we would give them, them this every week. Uh, we talk about it at practice, and we go into the game being as prepared as possible. This also came with video. Um, I'm not on the Knox huddle anymore, so I can't get it for you. But when we talk about um, some of their sets or some of their players, uh, they would have their own video. So this Jeffrey's kid, which are all his three-point attempts, just so our guys get an idea of what he likes to do. Same thing with the Cooper Flint, um, just to get a feel. Not super in-depth. Uh, the focus was always going to be more on us, so scout was secondary. Some things I just want to touch on briefly, like with the our team stuff, you guys can scout your own teams. Has anybody done a self-scout before? Yep, so why'd you do a self-scout? Yep. Can, like, press down on yep. Sweet. Um, yeah, I think, like I said, the main focus should be us before the scout. So yep. we kind of re-emphasize that. Cool. Why'd you do a self scout? So I want to know what my team is not in front of me. Yeah. Cool. So is that something that you did like privately, and then you just had to think about it and then go go on your way? Oh yeah. Um, you know, both sides you want them to be the best because yeah. I, they're going to have they're going to have weaknesses, and I want to know what my team's weaknesses are. For sure. So I can um, adjust to it. Do you tell your players this? Do you like go through the self scout with them? Yes, but in, not in a not in a negative way though. Gotcha. You know, like you know, what can we do better? Cool. Um, yeah, we've had a good decision. Like, yeah, just things like that. Sweet. Um, I think self scouting becomes really really important. Um, we did self-scouts for every single player in the 16 state team, was it last year? Is that right? Last year. And I stole this idea from the Brisbane Thunderbirds. It's a, it's a netball team, is that correct? Oh uh, yeah, they played in the Brisbane state, is that right? Yeah. Adelaide, Adelaide Thunderbirds. Okay, so <laughs> it was, all I remember is the Thunderbirds. Um, so we were in there for an NBL game and in each of the players' lockers, they had self-scouts. And I was like, this is like the weirdest thing of all time. But basically, the combination of what you guys were saying, a self-scout, or the way I like to think about self-scouts, what can you do to help us win? What can you do to make us successful? So uh, we went and made, I hope Gabe doesn't mind me showing this. Um, we would go and make self-scouts for all our players. So um, you can laugh at Gabe. He doesn't look like this anymore. Um, but basically, they had these cards. They were like this big, 
They carried them around everywhere. They had them in the locker room with them. Um, a reminder about some of the things they play for. Um, their heroes was a part of our team culture stuff, so they had that there. But then all this other stuff was um, how do they help us win? How do we help? Some of our team rules down here. So as kids are sitting in the locker room, they get nervous, they can just pull this out and just refocus. Um, so if your team isn't super into the scouting of the other team, maybe a self-scout is a good way to start. Um, just thought I'd show you guys that. Any questions at this point? Cool. So for state team and NBL one level, so let's say we have a touch point on this. What do you think the next bit uh, we can do with scouting is? Like what can we start to add when we get to the high levels? Uh, yes, yeah, so let's go. Yeah, so some of these tendencies, yeah. Well, that's not how you spell it, but whatever. Sets, yep, cool. I'm going to say no, because it's in the next one, so keep that answer. One more. What else? In the same, in the same family. Uh, Zone pressing trapping. Yeah. Zone, pressing, trapping. All right, cool. And deliverables. How do we want to deliver this? Someone said it before. Yeah. Film. I think this is the number one thing you should be doing at a state team level. If you're in an NBL one level, maybe your club doesn't give you a sports code or whatever. Maybe you don't have access, but definitely at a state team level where you can do video and everything is filmed, it is a massive, massive resource. Okay, so film would be the deliverable. All right, NBL, WNBL. I'm going through this very, very fast. What do we think? Now, you guys, some of in the room have had experience to this, right? But this is open for everyone. What do you think at the highest level in Australia sport we should be thinking about in scouting? Like an individual, like every player on the team has an individual. Yep. Yep. You know, right left hand spot. Yep. Very specific yeah, mm -hmm. for every player. Cool. So it would cover like all of these things for every single player. So probably more in depth. Yep. Hit me. Yep, coverage. Did he steal his answer? <laughs> coverage is for who? For who? Us or them? Their coverage. So how they defend us. Yeah. Cool. Great. What else? This one you might not get, but we'll see. How they score? I reckon you could do that here. What else? I've only ever done it at this level. I've never done it anywhere else. After timeouts, what do they run? ATO. After free throws, what do they run? ATOs, what do they run? So now you're scouting the coach. Okay, so coach scouting. On top of film and walkthroughs, how are we going to deliver this? Meetings. Meetings. All right, Mr. Serious. What else? Yep, so including those, yep. Anyone know what Fast Scout is? Hands up if you know what Fast Scout is. Fast Scout, great, good job. We're killing it. So this is a platform that provides the scout, the film and everything to the players at all times. They have all access to this. So they're not thinking about it just after one practice, they can go home and study. So that'd be the next thing. So continual learning of the scout. In the WNBL and the NBL, you have probably four days before each game to prepare. Like that's a lot of time. We only get maybe five minutes at a practice. Okay. So I'll go through some of the stuff we did in the WNBL um, and the NBL. This is what it looked like. Can everyone see that? All right. That's disgusting. Sorry. Okay. We would do this for every team. So Fast Scout is a great program. If you can get your hands on the free one as a starter, just to suss it out, it'd be great. But we would give this to them probably a week in advance. So, I mean, this is a lot for a WNBL team. So we'd have their offense, their defense, every single action they run, how we're going to guard it, what we might do want to change up. So now it's getting really, really specific. 
Talk about based on out of bounds, we even have a scout for that. Like it's different for whatever set they run. A little bit about us, I mean, we probably need more on that, but that's okay. And then for, for them, or at least for the Caps, we had probably a lot more detail than what you've seen um, with the stuff before. So majority when I was running these scouts, it was what, what hand are they? So like you spoke about, are they shooter driver? And then some other random things they're good at. So Wally, for example, she had these two things that were probably a little bit different. Uh, we had an assistant coach, Aiden, who went and watched all the film for these players and would give us like really specific, if they drive left, it's a pull up, if they drive right, it's a spin move. So they would have all this access to them. We can't run through everything all the time, but it's just the more information, the better. All this data is automated by FastScout. So if you buy the light version, you won't have this data, but I'll show you where you can get it from. So we would have this for every single player. Cool. Another example with Perth. Again, they ran a lot of sets. They had a lot of verbals. We were able to get most of them. But again, it's a lot. It's a lot of information. Same thing. With Fast Scout, yep. How many games back would you go when scouting a team at this level? So obviously teams would change things up. Right? Yep. So do you go three games, five games? Good question. So, me personally, I'd keep a track every game. So I'd watch every game, be across everything. But then we'd only use the last three games for scouts. There was something different. So when I would keep track of after free throws or after timeouts, they would stay. You just add those in. But last three games, be across everything. We'd also attach. Um, this is it. We would also attach a video package to the scout. So when I'll show you online what it looks like, but we would attach all the video. So like you saw on, this is Perth, right? That's not Perth, this is Perth. You see all these rows, empty, five out, step ups, ghost, wedge. We would attach a video file that has every single thing in there as well. So the players, we get that for every team, every week. There was no excuse not to be prepared. Um, and at the NBL level, it's pretty similar. Um, the Kings are a little bit unique this year because they switch everything. So it's not a lot on concept, it's more personnel. So for us at the Caps, it was concept heavy. Less about this, more about that. Coach, real quick. Yeah. Do you think by coach at the Kings switching all the time, do you reckon that makes the scouts easier by just focusing on personnel? Uh, I would say that I mean, I don't know, but I would say right now is if you're trying to keep track of 12 players as opposed to three or four concepts, that's probably harder. Even though you're switching everything, like you, like when someone subs in, you better know what they're doing. Otherwise, you're coming out of the get like that's the risk you run. But if your players can do that, it's great. You just worry about the players. Sorry. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're getting derailed. You're derailing me a little bit, but I'll answer the question. Um, so what happens? So if they go early, Misha, if they go early pick and roll one through five, and they switch it, let's say Bryce Cotton is uh, guarded by Geordie Hunter. Is that a good matchup? No, probably not. Right. So he, he's unbelievable. So the way that the Sydney Kings coach thinks about it. You would rather Bryce Cotton say to all the offense and just go ISO for the whole game. So you spend all week at practice practicing with your teammates. One guy's going to score all the points. Good luck. He's going to have 80 points. Good luck. The second part of that is what happens at end of possessions? What are all teams finishing? What concept? Pick and roll. So you end up switching back with the five man anyway. So when you watch the Kings plays, Geordie ends up switching back onto the five anyway, back in possession. So that's just what he believes in. Seems to be working okay, um, but that's to answer your question on that. Okay, good question. Um, for those that don't have Fast Scout, so please ignore our horrendous shot chart. But this is what Fast Scout looks like uh, from our perspective. So this is the one that. Hold on, let me just make this a little bit better. Okay, there we go. Um, our club pays for this. Thank you, Norse. Um, 
<laughs> so we're really lucky to have these numbers automated for us, but we use this a lot um, with self scouts that we spoke about. We can create self scouts. Um, we can see where we sit within the league. So I thought we were pretty good like defensively until the last couple games. But it gives you so much data that you can go off and have a play around with. Do you get to pick what you want to pull out in terms this of data? Is, like this is the same for everything. This, is the, this front page is the same. But I'll show you what it looks like when you can adjust. Good question. Cool. Um, let's pick a random. Someone shout out an association. Not them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go Sutherland. All right, so just like you saw, um, oh God, damn it. <laughs> you're killing me. Just like we saw with the Caps one, like the format, I kept it the same. Um, obviously, it's a little bit different. So we had, like we were talking about before, we had one way to guard everything, like across the season. So. Like one to four, it's hard to read if you haven't seen it before, but like one to four pick and roll or one to five pick and roll center field, that was our rule, it didn't change. Handoffs didn't change, staggers didn't change. So this is not Sutherland now, this is us. Like if we see any of these concepts, we're gonna guard it this way. And then it was their sets down here. Um, so kind of similar, bless you. And um, we go from there. With Norse, it, was, it had to be more simple because we've got um, I mean, they're great guys, but less talented athletes. So we reduced it to right hand, left hand, shooter or driver, and then the rule in pick and roll. So they ran a lot of pick and roll. Are you an over? Are you an under? Um, and then just some random, just ignore. If there's anything suspect, just ignore it because we lost this game. Um, yeah. The only thing I added from here, from the caps probably, is we had some data that the assistant coaches kept on the sidelines. So. Uh, their free throw shooters and three point shooters were really important to us, especially late in the game. So if they had a horrendous free throw shooter on at the end of the game, we were going to foul this guy. So this last page is something that the coaches would have with them on the bench. Um, and then this is just our stack comparison. So pretty similar, a little bit different. This goes from here, we would present. So we'd sit down and meet with our guys every week and it's like a slideshow and we would just tab through, talk about it. We've got all the film in there, um, got the defense clips, and so we would go through this as a team as well. So it gave the players a space to ask questions, to clarify. If we needed to adjust, um, we adjust. But that's far scout. How many players would you talk about at that level? The whole team? Definitely the first seven get the most content, and then if like, the only thing that we maybe would talk about is the shooting. Like if someone comes in and they maybe play 10 minutes a game, but they can sling it, you just got to be aware of that. For a team that trains probably twice or three times a week at this level, yep. when in the week do you start uh, talking about these concepts and then how much out of the practice time do you actually spend yep. on them? Good question. So we'd have two practices a week. Tuesday was our day, Thursday was scout day. So we would train for two hours, so seven to nine. On Tuesday we'd go, on Thursday we'd go seven to 7.25 scout meeting and then 7.30 to nine practice. There'd be a chunk of 25 minutes of walkthroughs. Is that generally at the end of practice or? Uh, how about I show you a practice plan? That might be better. Uh, oh, yeah. So, what our practice plan would look like. So, we'd keep a chunk. So, where you see Sutherland is where we go through. The scout, um, so somewhere in the middle. Cool. So if you don't have access to Far Scout, I'll give you some things that. Where to go? Some things we like to do. You can use this at a nationals. Am I running out of time, Jared? No, you're all good. Uh, Thirty minutes. Oh, are you guys okay? Do we need a drink break? Oh, I'll be done by then. I hope so. <laughs> okay, HoopsDB, unbelievable website. Um, when I told the state coaches about it, it blew their mind. They have the stats. If you're lucky enough to get an estate team or an NBL1 team, it gives you every single statistic and does everything that Fast Scout does for free. So um, let's go Oz Junior Champs, 
Dave won a bronze medal, so let's go up. Oh, I'm already on there, you know, I've already had a look. Um, so you can look at it um, from a review perspective afterwards. So if you want to look at a review, go to the summary page. Duncan Berg is the GOAT. I hope he hears that. Um, he's the guy that uh, puts all this together. And you can get the exact same numbers that I, we would get on Fast Scout, but for free. So you just go through this, have a look at it, um, and go through there. But because we're talking about scouting for our team or an opposition team, who was your last game against? WA Metro. Wham. If I was you, I'm not you, but I would go through this page, look at Wham. This is obviously supplemented with video and um, other data you've collected. Let it load. You could get, I mean, just as a starting point, you could get a snapshot of what the whole league is looking like at this point. So Wham, their top three in scoring per game, maybe that's where you start to build your scout out from. This is wrong. I wouldn't look at these numbers, just a heads up. They're not right. <laughs> Player stats was probably the next thing you go to look for. So you're looking at their highest minute guys. So filter it by minutes, boom, 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 boom. They're the most important players. When we talk about how many guys do you account for, maybe at a state level, it's the first six or seven. I just go by minutes um, and filter it that way. You want to look at guys that will come in and shoot them. You got a guy on there, Channing, did he shoot it a lot? Yep, so the numbers backed it up. Perfect, we go from there. And then all those shot charts you guys saw on the Fast Scout, you can screenshot on here and dump it into a PDF like you saw with the Knox one. Okay, same thing with the players. You can get players' shot charts on this thing too. So if you're in an NBL1 staff, like helping with scouting, or you go to a Nationals, you can do all those numbers from this website. Um, any questions on HoopsDB? No? Cool. Probably the last thing for me, just some, just some high level stuff. When I was at the Hawks, do you guys still use this? Yep. Oh, that's good. When I was at the Hawks, I was tasked with uh, creating a scout spreadsheet. So something that we didn't have Fast Scout, we didn't have um, Spatial Jam Plus at the time, right? Do you guys still, you don't even have that? Okay, cool. So we had to create a spreadsheet that we could print and give to the players. So similar to the Fast Scout, this is what it looked like. Um, a lot of work went into this. My girlfriend, shout out, she made this spreadsheet with me because I'm not very good at Excel. Um, but you can do something like this for your team too. So this is all driven off manual input. So if you go for Hoops DB, you can get this stuff off game day. Um, let's just go to the team inputs. So I would literally just copy and paste the data into here. Same with the individuals. Like it looks like a behemoth, but we got a, we got a humming. Um, and then you could go to any team uh, tab and it would be there for you. Like the data's all being dragged in from somewhere else. So we would use this at the Hawks. Same thing. This is not a good example. How do I get back to the... Where's Sydney? This is crazy. Okay, so same thing, like the coaches would have this chunk, so the death chart down to the free throw tab with them. So same thing, they know who to foul, they know not who to give open shots to, because we've filtered the three point lines and free throws, highest and low. The other thing that was unique about this spreadsheet is that we do stack comparisons, so if it was gold, you were top three in the league at that thing. If you were green, you were better than the other team. If you were red, you were worse. Same thing with the players. If they were a top something in the league, they had that highlighted. Um, just something for the players. So we had this in like a big poster that was posted up all around the change room for the Hawks. So even at an NBL level, you can make it work with limited resources. Um, any questions about this spreadsheet? Cool. How long did it take you to make? Sorry? How long did it take you to make? Long ass time. <laughs> so I'm glad they're still using it four years later. <laughs> so that's good. Um, and probably the last thing I'll just show you guys is this thing called Instat. So if you get a chance to get an Instat account or a Synergy account, go scalpel one because it's incredible. Um, I can't give this one away, unfortunately, because I'll lose it. So if we were going to go scout um, a team, we'd have Fast Scout, we've had Hoops DB. Now we need some video. 
we can sit there and code and cut up every single game just takes way too long. Um, we only had one assist in the new video this year. So if I wanted to review my team, please work. Didn't work the other day. Shout out to Luke Han from Basketball Queensland for his account. Let me get rid of this. Please think of some questions. If, if you don't have any questions. Which data? So this is done by AI. Same, if you've used Huddle, um, sorry, I don't know why If you've used Huddle Assist, it's like the same. AI does it. There used to be guys sitting like offshore that used to do it, but it's just a computer generated stat now, which is pretty cool. If it doesn't work, I can show you guys later, but we would have, so think of the fast scout page where it gave you all the numbers in stat and synergy is the same. You get video for every single statistic. So the video you showed us just then for your scout for Sutherland, that was from this? Definitely the personnel was from that. Um, so you can go through and collect every single person's field goal attempts, free throws, shot locations, pick and roll attempts. Um, we would use Instat for possessions. So we would, if we were scouting another team, we would grab all their possessions the last three games and then sort them out into sets, whatever it was, and do it that way. But if it doesn't load, I can't help you. Oh, here we go. I can tell Miles is on it because Adelaide's here, but yeah. So we get this page, so really similar to the um, Fast Scout. We go to games. Everything you see that's blue, we get a video clip for. So if it's been uploaded to YouTube, to Huddle, to MBL one they'll have video of it. I don't know how they do it. Russian spies, but yeah. <laughs> Misha. And uh, yeah, so if we, were, if we were to find players field goals, we'd do it through this thing. Um, it was also a really good way to analyze like self scouts. So we'd have lineup data. So we wanted to find our best lineup. We could do that. We could see what their minutes look like. So this is just super ballistic, hardcore scouting. Don't have to worry about it, but um, just thought I'd show you guys what it looks like. We could do it for offense and defense. You can literally just click middle pick and roll going left and it'll show you pull up a video hopefully it's a good clip oh this is last year so it doesn't matter it's all good and it would show you every single clip make and miss and you do that for scouting teams also so that's yeah that's big boy you don't have to do that um, but that's just to give you an overview of what I like to do but again all stems back to this process and we split it out this way. So in all our scouts you would have seen, there's a player concept, so there's a player section and a concept section and we work our way that way. Are there any questions? I know it's a lot, I know there's a lot of shit I just showed you, but yeah, ask away. Does anyone want to scout even more now or they don't want to scout <laughs> after this? You want to scout more? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. The last thing I'll leave you with, with scouting, um, I think everyone should be doing it because it creates an advantage. So if you're trying to win, great. If you're trying to develop, you're teaching through scouting. Um, so we should all get on board and start doing it. Um, you might do it to hide your deficiencies. Let's say you're not a very athletic team, you might zone. Or you want to stop them shooting, you might zone. Or you see that they can't dribble left, you might send them left every time. So there's always a space for it. Um, you just have to put some time into it.